All right, let's finish this up. You know the rules, they haven't changed, except that this is a half season. For a normal length season, the minimum score needed to be reached is 70. This season needs to hit 35 to be considered a passing season, 40 to be considered a good season, and 45 to be considered a great season. Let's go. The Crystal Empire. Good character moments, decent humor, and a really good adventure. 10 stars total. Too many Pinkie Pies. The funniest episode in the whole series, and Pinkie Pie is totally in character. Five stars. One bad apple. If a bad moral wasn't enough, it's the forced plot and a horrible attempts at comedy. One star. Magic Duel. A great grudge match between Trixie and Twilight with everything top notch. Five stars. Sleepless in Ponyville. Despite Luna's sleepwalker role being confusing at best, the episode had enough sentiment to warrant five stars. Wonderbolts Academy. I originally gave this episode four stars, but after refuting Biter's arguments, I realized that this changed Rainbow's character from wanting to be admired to wanting to be admirable. It's the greatest character development she's gotten to date. Five stars. Just for sidekicks. Some minor logical problems, some mean-spirited jokes, but in all in all, it was alright. Four stars. Apple Family Reunion. It's an Applejack episode and not much else. Two stars. Spike at your service. Why is Spike such a klutz? One star. Keep calm and flutter on. If you want to make the evil guys good, don't make the good guys evil. One star. Games Ponies Play. Terrible plot, but pretty good comedy. Magical Mystery Cure. It's all the emotional chords it needs to. Five stars. 46 out of 65. Before I go on, I want to show you guys how it compares to the original two seasons. We're going to divide them each in half and see how they compare. I'm not giving a brief synopsis, I'm just giving their names and their score. Let's go! Friendship is Magic, Part 1, 4 stars. Friendship is Magic, Part 2, 2 stars. The Ticketmaster, 2 stars. Apple Buck Season, 4 stars. Griffin the Brush Off, 4 stars. Ghostbusters, 1 star. Dragon Shy, 5 stars. Look Before You Sleep, 1 star. Bridal Gossip, 1 star. Swarm of the Century, 5 stars. Winter Wrap Up, 3 stars. Call of the Cutie, 5 stars. Fall Weather Friends, 4 stars. Hmm, that's odd. 5 points worse than Season 3. By the way, for the record, I could have failed Griffin the Brush Off by focusing on guilt and downplaying the humor. I could have also failed Storm of the Century for Pinky's lack of explaining things. If I did that, this first half season might not have passed. But that's okay, the show's just getting established. You know, kind of like how Season 3 is establishing itself without Lauren Fast. On to the next group. Suited for success, 5 stars. Feeling Pinky Keen, 1 star. Sonic Rainboom, 5 stars. Stairmaster, 4 stars. Showstoppers, 1 star. A Dog and Pony Show, 5 stars. Green isn't your color, 4 stars. Over a Barrel, 4 stars. A Bird in the Hoof, 1 star. The Key to My Chronicles, 5 stars. Alice Where That Ends Well, 1 star. Party of One, 5 stars. The Best Night Ever, 5 stars. Oh. My. God. It's like, it's exactly the same score I gave Season 3. Once again, there are some episodes I could have failed but didn't. I could have failed Over a Barrel by interpreting all the characters out of character. I could have failed Stairmaster by playing up the annoyance of the CMC. And Twilight dying. Huh, I guess that makes it twice now. I could have also failed Suited for Success, because the plot only works because the main six all blindingly take advantage of Rarity's generosity at the exact same time. And I could have failed Party of One, the party extraordinaire for getting her own birthday. The Return of Harmony, 10 stars. Less than zero, five stars. Luna Eclipse, four stars. Sister Who Social, five stars. The Cutie Pox, two stars. May the Best Pet Win, one star. The Mysterious Meridwell, one star. Sweet and Elite, five stars. Secret of My Excess, four stars. Family Appreciation Day, five stars. Baby Cakes, one star. Heart Swarming Eve, Three stars. 46 out of 65. Are you beginning to notice a pattern yet? Once again, let's see what episodes I could have failed. Among other things, I could have failed Sweet and Elite for Rarity's terrible behavior. I could have also failed Her Swarming Eve because there's no real conflict. There are other episodes I could have failed in there too, but let's move on to the last group. The last round up, four stars. The Super Speedy Setter Squeezy 6000, three stars. Read and Weep, four stars. Hearts and Hooves Day, four stars. A Friend Indeed, three stars. Putting Your Hoof Down, zero stars. It's About Time, four stars. Dragon Quest, one star. Hurricane Fluttershy, five stars. Honeyville Confidential, five stars. Mr. and the Friendship Express, one star. A Canterlot Wedding, ten stars. All right, a little worse off, but we're close. Once again, let's see which episodes I could have failed, but I didn't. I could have failed the last roundup by finding Pinky annoying rather than funny. I could have failed the Cider episode because of its mean-spirited nature. I could have failed Read and Weep because it jams the moral down our throats. I could have failed Hearts and Hoofs Day by deducting more points for the baby talk. I could have failed a friend indeed because it turned Pinky into an insensitive stalker. I could have failed It's About Time because the plot is predictable and Twilight is debatably out of character. I could have failed Ponyville Confidential because it gets a little too mean-spirited. I could have also failed The Canterlot Wedding because the villain's plan is a little convoluted. Notice something? Yeah, that's like every single episode in this stretch. I could have failed some Season 3 episodes. Most of them will be Games Ponies Play and Just for Sidekicks. I gave arguments and reasons why each episode deserved its score because they are what I think the episodes deserve. Sure, I find Hearts and Hooves Day's baby talk annoying, but some people find it hilarious. 
I try to be as unbiased as possible. Of course, it's impossible to be totally unbiased. Some things piss me off more than others, but what can you do? If you've noticed my tallies, Season 3 is pretty par for the course. I honestly don't know why people are panicking. Granted, you may not agree with my picks of the good episodes and the bad episodes, but unless you're as jaded as someone like Biter, then chances are there are only 3 or 4 episodes that you consider bad in this stretch of 13. But Season 3 does have its own unique problems. Let's start with the most obvious one, the unbalanced character screen time. People say that Pinkie Pie got way too much screen time. People also say that Rainbow got too much screen time in Season 2. As for the latter argument, I'll admit Rainbow was there a lot, but she didn't really disrupt anything. However, Pinkie Pie in Season 3 did cause a lot of problems. Not in every episode, mind you, but quite a few. The most notable examples are Games 20's Play and Wonderbolt's Academy. The only excuse I can think of is that the writers think putting Pinkie into an episode automatically makes it funny. Yeah, yeah, that that's not true. And no, she didn't ruin one bad apple because it was off to begin with. They did it with Twilight in Season 1, apparently they did it with Rainbow in Season 2, and it'll probably be Fluttershy in Season 4. Either her or Rarity. Speaking of which, Rarity didn't get an episode in Season 3, and a lot of people are miffed about it. So they're obviously going to give her multiple ones in Season 4. The only thing I have to ask about this is, don't do what I'm going to call pulling an Apple Family Reunion, which is essentially where they make an episode solely to give a character screen time. Think of a situation that Rarity's flaws would reasonably get her into. Don't just put her in the limelight to put her in the limelight. This season also felt very experimental, let's say. New animation and storytelling techniques were used. While they never actually hurt the episodes, they didn't exactly help either. They were mostly just there. I kept getting the impression that the writers were doing it just to prove that they could do it. They'll probably come up again in future seasons, so we shouldn't be surprised at seeing more CGI or musical episodes or simultaneous stories, etc. And speaking of things returning, let's have an offhand count of what was established in Season 3. An ancient empire that disappeared for 1,000 years. The mirror pool and a cigarette book detailing it. The alicorn amulet. Trixie's reformation. Discord's reformation at Celestia's request. The Equestria Games. Celestia negotiating with Saddle Arabians. Twilight's new status. They're obviously building up to something, I'm just not sure what. Like I said, there's not much to say about Season 3 that I haven't said before. It's pretty par for the course. Similar strengths and problems to the previous two. The problems just stick out more with less episodes. Things are doing fine, despite what people like Biter are saying. Speaking of that, I should give a bit of an update on what I've been doing. Why have I been rebutting Biter's arguments? Besides the fact that they, you know, annoy me. Simple because they're filled with lies and a lack of understanding. It's one thing to nitpick, and it's another to make things up. He can have any reason he wants to hate any episode he wants, provided they're, you know, real reasons that actually exist. It's not his opinions on fighting, it's his facts. He claims the first two seasons were better based on things that aren't true. And I'm not done with that little side quest either. Expect at least two other videos in that series. Now what else am I going to be doing? I'm almost at 100 subscribers. In fact, by the time this video goes up, I probably will be. So as promised, my next review will be Snowdrop. I'm also going to make that top 10 worst episodes list, my top 20 favorite episodes, a season 4 wish list, and some things that you request. And yes, you can expect an Equestria Girls review when it comes out. Aside from that, here's to hoping we'll have a fantastic season 4. True, true friend. Um, hello, friend trapped inside, remember? Rarity.